Hey everybody, welcome to this video and I'm going to be doing a classic Newton's second law uh, problem here and this is going to be dealing with the elevator problem where there's an elevator and you want to find out what is your apparent weight on that elevator. So in this problem we're going to be dealing with Newton's second law um, which means we're going to have a net force. The, net, the second law means that uh, if I write it out in terms of just what it means, it means uh, very simply that the sum of the forces, if I drew out the sum of the forces, okay, all of those forces added up equals the mass times the net acceleration, okay, and that also equals the force net, okay. That's the second law, pretty simple. And I'm going to teach it to you probably a little bit differently than you've been seeing uh, in your classes. And the, second, the, w the way I teach the second law is that if you're going to have a net force, I'm going to want you to draw two free body diagrams. Okay, let me show you why. So let's just say that I have an object here, and let's just say that this object is it, this object here is resting on a scale, which is this little brown box here, and this this is the floor of an elevator. And let's just say that my object is going to be accelerating up. Let's just draw like a little arrow here to show that I'm going to be accelerating up in this elevator here. Um, and what I want to do is I want to find the apparent weight, so this is my acceleration, let's just say I have some acceleration going up, and I want to find the apparent weight. So what is the apparent weight? What does that mean, apparent weight? You've heard of that before, what does that mean? Apparent weight. Well this is what a scale would read, okay? So typically if you're dealing with a scale, let's just say that um, you have a scale and you step on it, the scale's going to read the normal force, always. It's not going to read your true weight, believe it or not. So if you're in an elevator, and let's just say that your normal force of gravity here, I'm going to put it in the center of mass, your normal force of gravity is down like this. Let me bring this to the front. Your normal force of gravity is down like this, and you're accelerating up. Uh, what happens is that the normal force has to be greater than your force of gravity here. Okay, so the normal force has to be greater like this. Okay, let me change the color here just to emphasize what's happening. So let's say that the green one is your normal force and the blue one is the force of gravity. So here's your force normal and this is what the scale is always going to read. It's not going to read your weight. So if you're accelerating up in an elevator, okay, your force of gravity is down, we know that that's always mg, right? But if you're accelerating up, then that normal force from the floor has to be greater than your, your weight, okay? Has to be. So when we talk about this right now, when we talk about the concept of apparent weight, I am always talking about the normal force for apparent weight, okay? Your apparent weight can change. If you're accelerating up, it grows. If you're accelerating down, it shrinks, okay? So your true weight, your true weight, down here, if I would just call this your weight, your true weight, is always just mg. That never changes. So if somebody says to you, what's your apparent weight, that varies. But if they say, what's your weight, it's always just M mg. Your true weight is always mg, okay? So let's just talk about that. This is a Newton's second law equation. Why? Because I have an imbalance. We have a tug of war and somebody's winning this tug of war, correct? Who's winning the tug of war? The normal force, right? The normal force is winning the tug of war. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to emphasize a few things here to show you Newton's second law graphically, okay? Graphically. So this is what I have. This is my free body diagram. These are the natural forces acting on this object, okay? And I'm accelerating up, okay? I'm accelerating up. Okay, so I have a second free body diagram drawn here and the reason is that when we're dealing with the second law I always want you to draw two free body diagrams. So you might say well why do I need to draw two free body diagrams? And the reason is this. What is Newton's second law? Okay, if we look over here, if I look over here and the top over here, I know that it's the sum of the forces equals ma net, okay? So if I go over here to this to this graph, um what do I have? Well, that's a graphical representation of Newton's second law. So if I, if I look here, if I say the sum of the forces, right? So what are the sum of the forces? What does that mean? Well, that's what this is. That's the sum of the forces, right? Equals what? Ma net. 
or the force net. You can also just write force net, but it equals MA net. So remember, and I'll put it under here net force. This is also, you know, I'll extend it down here for a second. I'm also just going to put that this also equals just F net. It's the same thing depending on what you want to talk about. So what is the net force? What does the word net mean? It simply means um, whatever's left over, right? So if I'm looking for the net force, I'm basically saying I'm basically saying I'm looking for the forces that are that are left over. So what's left over here? Well, let's say my normal's here and it's greater than gravity, right? So whatever's left over is going to be my net force over here. So if I draw this over here, I can show the net force by this red arrow here. Okay, so this is the net force. Net. And I want to emphasize something really important here. The net force, okay, let me just put these little arrows above here just to be complete in terms of forces. But the net force here, the net force is not a force, okay? It's not a force. What is it? It's whatever's left over from these, right? So, for example, if this was 30 and this was 10, the net force would be 20, right? That's it, okay? So it's also equaling MA net. You can say the same thing. So this is Newton's second law at work. So always, always draw two free body diagrams when you have Newton's second law. You cannot draw the net force on this diagram. It's not going to work. You're going to get confused. You would have to draw it down for it to work. This is how Newton's second law is meant to be drawn, as two different free body diagrams, one with the natural forces or the sum of the forces, and then the other one with the net force. Okay. So if you can do this every time with Newton's second law, these problems are going to become much, much easier. Now the next thing you need to take a look at is this. Where is the net force? And that's going to tell you the direction that you should choose your positive axis. So I'm going to choose my positive y-axis is up, okay, because my net force is up. Well, what's the big deal about that? We always draw my, I always draw my y-force up, you know, my net y-direction up right so what's the what's the big deal well in this case it just so happens that the net force is up okay so if it was down then I would draw my positive y-axis down so why would I do that well in this problem what I'm trying to do basically is I'm trying to find the apparent weight of this okay so I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna just take a look at Newton's second law and I'm gonna say the sum of the forces equals in this case I'm gonna say ma net or you could just, yeah, just MA net. So what are my forces here? What are the sum of my forces? Well, I know that I have the normal, and I know, I know that I have gravity, and the positive is up. So I'm going to say this minus this gives me this left over in the positive direction, okay? So down here, when I say the sum of the forces equals this, I can say the force normal, okay, minus the force of gravity equals, in this case, F net. And I'm going to bring these a little bit closer together here. Okay. But again, that's all that I have. I have the normal minus gravity equals F net. That's Newton's second law. This is the most basic example, the most basic application. So I could take this a step further. Let's say I wanted to find out what is the apparent weight. What's the normal? Well, then I would simply say the normal minus mass times gravity, okay, equals mass times net acceleration. My acceleration is up in this case. Okay, so I want to find the normal, the apparent weight. This is, again, this is the apparent weight. I'm going to put AW, okay, apparent weight, and this is what the scale is going to read. Scale is always going to read the normal, okay. So the, the normal or the apparent weight is going to equal m a net, and you might be given that net you could be given that net acceleration up. Bring this over here, so you're going to get plus mg. Okay. So now your normal force or the apparent weight is going to equal the mass. I'm going to factor out an m here. I'm going to factor out an m times the acceleration net 
plus g. So what does that mean? Well, what is your what is the weight in a typical situation? Well, it's just mass times gravity. But in this case, you now you're adding the acceleration going up, right? So that's how you would find the apparent weight of an elevator that's accelerating in the up direction. In the next video, I'm going to talk to you about how to find the normal in a situation where an elevator is accelerating in the down direction. But this is this example is just an introduction to show you how to find it in the up direction. So again, to summarize, okay, we were sitting on a scale, okay, the elevator is accelerating up, okay, so that means the normal force has to be greater than gravity. The difference of these two gives you the net force. We write two free body diagrams, right? We this is the graphical representation of Newton's second law. So I say the sum of the forces equals F net. So the normal minus gravity equals F net and I substitute in uh, gravity for mg and the f net for ma net. I bring over my mg here and I, I, I get very simply that the normal force equals the mass times the acceleration net plus gravity, whatever that is. All right, so again, like I said before, in the next video I'm going to talk about how to find the normal force when the elevator is accelerating down, but in this case, this is the most basic application of Newton's law. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.